time of year again. I mean, fall is right around the corner, but um, first of all, I'd just like to thank Sarah Buffington for another fabulous job she did running the planner program downtown. You know, last year was the first one we did, and I thought it was extremely successful, and I think there was some people that participated last year that realized that they had to raise their game, and I, I thought that this year was spectacular. And we have uh, two individuals. I take it, you're Andrew? I'm David. Uh, Andrew and David, <laughs> Dimov, who not only stepped up the game, but they took on the three planners between the Bonton and Caparella. So hopefully you had an opportunity to see this. But I don't want to steer any more thunder from Sarah. So there, it's all yours. Oh, I, uh, when I was asked to find sponsors for the three big beds, I really thought that was going to be a challenge because they're humongous. Been through there, but they're really large, and I thought I thought I'd have to find three separate sponsors. And when these guys said they take all three, I nearly wept. <laughs> so, uh, and they really did a fabulous job, and the judges were also uh, uh, very much impressed. So thank you guys very much. If you guys want to say a few words, you can. I'll leave you to it. Yeah, well, it was a great pleasure to actually be able to do that. Thanks for Sarah. You know for. Um, basically, such a great opportunity because we always look forward to things. You know to you know, make the community look better. And you know, it was a really good thing to do from our side. And um, it wouldn't have been possible really without, we had four sponsors that helped us with all the plants because we used a massive amount of plants in it. So um, um, out in Burnham, there's uh, Nadia's Massage and Body Work. And in Strode's Mills, um, there's Yulia's Krasa Spa, um, Elizabeth's Vitality Spa, and uh, Tatiana's Healing Arts. So they, we all came together and got all the plants ready and just kind of maintained it and Sarah stepped in when we were on vacation so that was that was a really crucial yeah. point there too thank you so much yeah are they all re relatives of yours yes we're all related that's family affair <laughs> yeah. all right so I have a citation for your efforts so there you go thank you very thank much you. thank you the annual Jim Tunnel Award ribbon all right so thank you your flowers up. and neglect of animals, and that means any animal that is owned, penned, chained, barned, kenneled. Um, so that means horses, cows, cats, dogs. Um, we deal with the entire state, so 67 counties, and what our organization was meant and made to do, our mission was to help our police departments in assisting them to follow through with humane cases. I don't think that I'm the only one in this town that thinks that there's a major cat problem. Um, and that's only one of our problems. But the cat issue, we need to try to address at some point in time or the other. And I feel that I'm actually disabled. Our volunteer is all, or our rescue is all volunteer run. Can't do it by myself. But I can tell you that on a daily basis, seriously, daily basis, our organization gets called to assist. Roth is great. We are here, we don't have a shelter, we don't have resources. We have no place to stick all these cats, the strays, etc. 
our idea is getting a lot of volunteers together, get donation jars out to the local businesses, any businesses that are willing to put them in, actually specifically put it for TNR. TNR does work if we work at it. Um, so that's one of our ideas. The second thing that I wanted to address is the eviction processes, or I should say the um, when people's homes become deemed uninhabitable. We had an incident about a month and a half ago where two elderly residents' homes were, um, what's it called? Condemned. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, were condemned. We were contacted at 7.30 at night. Another rescue was apparently supposed to assist this couple. The elderly woman, it was through the area agency on aging. The elderly couple, uh, the, the wife was actually taken to the hospital and admitted. The husband sat on the porch from the time that house was deemed uninhabitable until 7.30 at night when one of their far off relatives that haven't heard from these couple in years calls us and says, hey, can you help me with the dog? I can't do anything for these people at 7.30 at night. We have a temporary kennel and Although I would love to help, I can't just make a dog disappear. It's just not possible. So I'm requesting some sort of assistance from the borough that when this stuff happens, somebody yells at us and lets us know or gives us a heads up or something because there is no reason why that elderly man sat on his porch with his dog till 7.30 at night rather than being with his wife at the hospital. And I'm not saying that in a, neg a nasty, negative, mean way. I'm saying I don't have a problem helping. But if I don't know, I don't know. And you know, at 7.30 at night, you know, everybody's gone from the borough. You know, I've got this guy with his dog sitting on the porch. I have nowhere to stick it. <coughs> State police are like, call us, which is fine. We have to be able to make a plan. So if there is a residence where there are animals, even shoot me an email and say, hey, it could be, you don't have to give me an address, something, let me know. Um, we just recently cleaned up a house down on Logan for codes. Uh, there was thought to be 20 cats. Thankfully there was only 13, but three were dead when we found them behind the washer with other live ones laying on top of it. We have a major problem in this town. And it, it, it's not just here. Like, please don't think that. Good Lord, it's everywhere and cats are really, really bad right now. One other issue real quickly that I wanted to address, and I don't know if anybody else has had an issue with this or not, but is the response to humane calls. We will assist our police departments any way possible. We have offered every police department in this county an outdoor kennel. Some can't have one because they have nowhere to put it. We've offered them dog treats, dog boxes, catch poles, leashes, collars, slip leads, Microchip readers, digital infrared thermometers, so when they get called out to go to Walmart, they can put it like in the crack that these people are leaving open at 100 degrees because animals are dying in the state. And right now, if you leave your dog in a car out there and it dies of heat exhaustion, you're now charged with a felony. So we're not messing with summary citations anymore. As of last August, the laws have changed. I need, I actually can be sworn in as a humane officer. Again, it would be a volunteer position. I'm not going to make any money, and I have no problem going out and assisting the PD. The problem will be, if I get sworn in, I am only allowed to write summary citations. So I'm going to need our officers to be able to assist me if there is a misdemeanor or a felony charge. We had an issue a couple weeks ago where a resident moved out left a couple cats behind, but instead of leaving them inside the house, she put them out, and they knew it. The neighbors were willing to witness and state those were her cats, okay? At that point, it's called abandonment under the PA Crimes Code. We need these people charged, because when we allow them to continue to do this, it's ending up everyone else's problems. That particular woman couldn't even let her dogs out. for her dogs, it's her property but there's five cats sitting on her porch that the people dump next door. Those cats have been fed, watered. They don't know what to do, you know, and it's not their fault. <clears throat> and this whole town is like that. So maybe something where we could put, I mean, I don't know where I would go to actually, maybe the landlords in this town, and we know who they are because there's a somewhere that says these people own this house and it is a rental property. 
maybe make it a policy for the for the borough that these landlords are putting something in there where they need to see rabies and license for these animals. Cats indoors must also have rabies through the Department of Agriculture. We have to do something with the tenants in this town, especially especially the rental properties, because they're leaving behind animals and our departments are not charging these plate people. They need charged or it's not going to stop. And so when they leave them out, it then becomes everyone's problem. Where if we could nip it in the bud when they're dumping them and get them charged, even if it is a summary citation, five summary citations of animal cruelty on someone's record, the next landlord's gonna know, don't let them have animals. You know, we have to be a little bit more proactive. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not coming in here trying to be nasty or negative or rotten. We're buried. I don't think you can tell that, like, I'm beat. I'm exhausted because we deal with this all over the state, not just here, but I'm here, and I'm willing to help. So if anyone has any suggestions, too, I didn't bring cards. I apologize. I forgot them. I ran out the door. But our organization is online, one dog at a time at ODAT. Give me a holler. We're always willing to assist. Okay? And thank you so much for letting me talk for a minute. Well, 10, maybe. Sorry. Thank you for what you do. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. <clears throat> Approval of the ward bed for Fulk Road and signs and floor bed for the CDBG project in the amount of $163,361.64. Okay, so this is for the paving of Spring Street and the 34500 block of South Wayne Street. There were two bids submitted, one from Hawbakers in the amount of $178,678 and one from Falk Roads in the amount of $163,361.64. So we're looking for approval so we can let the county, the commissioners gave their authorization on last Thursday and we're looking for approval to go forward with this in, uh, get the paving going so we can complete it this fall. This is CDBG money. Mr. Kind of the wishes. <clears throat> there a motion to award the bid for all road signs? I'll make a motion. That was a little bit. That was a little by $15,000. Motion be made, property second. Question. All those in favor, give it a chance of saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carries. Christina Milligan. Here. Agenda. Anybody see anything in there they want to discuss separately? If not, I'll accept the motion to approve it. <coughs> I'm looking at item E1. In fact, the use request that came in late and was approved in between meetings. Uh, the uh, AAA approached me, Frank, about using, I think it was a total of 10 spaces right behind the AAA office for, they had a customer appreciation day where they did shredding and they needed some space for their shredding machine. It was after the meeting, so I called up uh, Mr. Sear and um, got his blessing for the approval to let them use those 10 spaces. Any other questions about the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Motion to approve the consent agenda. 
I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Motion to make property second. Question. <clears throat> All those in favor, give the consent to say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. I'll need to abstain. I have uh, item C4, for general. I don't think I have any interest in that project. Okay. Then the side note, you all know that the bridge is now open. <laughs> East Charles Street is now open. <laughs> Okay, treasurer's report. Um, so the, the calculation worksheet for our MML, um, our municipal minimum obligation, was uploaded on the website for council to review. The MML is our expected financial obligation for the upcoming year for our pension plan. Um, and, the, and the law requires that the governing body of the municipality of the pension plans are informed of the obligation by the last business day of September. Uh, the calculation of the 2019 plan cost requires an estimate of the 2018 W-2 wages of the employees that are covered by the plan. Uh, the MMO is the municipality's 2019 bill for the pension plan. Um, the calculated obligation must be paid by December of this next year. Um, the obligation must be met with either general fund monies or with any general state aid that we would get uh, to the municipal pensions to which we might be entitled to under the Act 205. So what I'm looking for tonight is Council's approval acknowledging the receipt of the 2019 MMO uh, obligation for the BRRRS non-uniform uh, pension plan and uniform pension plan. <coughs> I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Motion to be made, properly second. Question? All those in favor, give the consent for saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Still care. Okay. The next thing I have is we received a letter from the Tax Claim Bureau notifying us that an offer had been received for 8 Feeder Avenue um, in the amount of $483. Um, and I would need council's approval in order to accept that. It was in the repository for unsold properties. It had been owned by a Wagner, and a Richard Dean is making the offer. Which council is this? There are motions to accept the proposal. I assume they're going to renovate the property and bring it back up to code. Yeah, that I don't know. I just know that he, you know, they sent it to us. What's the condition of that property, Rex? It's in bad shape. And the guy's uh, hoping to get to, to buy it. And it will fix it up and make it a rental property. What about the current owner? The current owners are deceased. No estate. Well, that's a long story. There was a put of in, but the families, their stepchildren, and nobody could get together, so they just walked away from it. I'll make the motion that we accept the offer. I'll second. Motion to make. Anybody want to second it? Yes, I oh, I'm sorry. Second. <coughs> Question? All those in favor, give us a chance to say aye. Aye. Opposed? Still carry. Um, and the last thing I have is we received a letter from the Board of Assessment Appeals regarding a list of per capita exonerations submitted by our tax collector. <coughs> uh, the initial letter from uh, Aaron Annawal uh, stated that the per capita tax bills were undeliverable and returned to her by the post office every year. Um, the letter stated she had been recording every per capita bill returned to her since she began collecting in 2014, and none of the per capita bills have been collected for a minimum of three and a half years. She would like to have them exonerated and removed from the tax rolls. What are council's wishes? <coughs> Wait, this is from 2014? Um, 
Yeah. You mean they came back, returned, or? But every year since then is my understanding of that. Um, Aaron, they've been returned every single cycle, so not just the last four and a half years, like the last nine cycles in a row, they've all been returned to me, and we've never ever collected those tax. And it's, I mean, my goal was the saving money on the postage, the envelopes, the printing, everything like that. We have to have pay to have those printed, mailed, everything, every year. Nothing on Google to track and to find out where, else, where they're at now or anything, get an address? I'm not sure how that would even be possible. Well, anybody that uses Google, you can, you can find them. Okay. Uh, I mean, some of the people on the list are deceased. A lot of them just got moved out of the county. We just have no idea where they are. They did a reassessment last year, so if they were going to find the people, I think they would have found them then. How much is it? $3,430, but that's 50% of that, right, Aaron? Right, yeah, the borough, that's only, that's the full amount of the tax, the borough only gets half of it. Okay. That's the occupation tax, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which council is it? Well, once, once they go to Lakewood, they go to the, the Lakewood collector. Isn't the procedure for the delinquent collector to ask for the exoneration? More? That's what I would. Think. That's what I would think. I mean, that's how it's handled in other tax situations. Yeah, one, once once a tax collector doesn't collect it by the end of the year, those delinquents are turned over to the delinquent collector, which in this case would now be Keystone. And Keystone would have to ask for the exoneration for collecting the delinquent bills. That's what MIFCO always did before. I'm not asking for exoneration. I'm exa asking for the exoneration of the current bills, which will remove them from the tax rolls in the future. I'm not asking for exoneration of all the past bills. Okay. What do you do there, Mark? I don't know. I'll take some look and I'm not sure. I mean, is that a job for the assessment office to look into? That's kind of what I would think. They're the ones who set out, send out the tax rolls. Yeah, I mean, it's up to them to clean up their rolls, not us. Well, the county commissioners approved it already. Sorry, I jumped ahead of myself a little bit. I should have asked before we get into our regular agenda. Is there anyone in the audience that has anything to bring before council before we continue on? Okay. Right. Code on enforcement. Last month there were 72 violations. Maybe one was put before those were coarse grass and weeds. Uh, we did condemn five properties last month. As far as permits, this year we did issue 25 zoning permits compared to 58 last year. Uh, those zoning permits come out to $1,962.96 in fees compared to last year of $9,762.75 in fees. And this year we issued 17 sidewalk permits compared to 26 last year, which this year come up to $2,126.64 in fees compared to last year well, it was $970. And that difference is probably bigger sidewalk jobs which cost more. 
Total year to date permit fees was $64,414.97. And I didn't, don't have last year's number there because it would be way out of whack compared to the big hits we had this year for zoning fees. But year to date, construction wise in the borough, it's been $6,888,261 worth of improvements. And then there was one local letter issued last month. Feet. And you also, I think, have at your place a letter that's called received. <clears throat> we have a copy of that from FEMA. From FEMA. From FEMA. They do not. I think it was posted. Yeah, it was on your account. <clears throat> our ratings stay the same, and residents get a 10% discount for what we do in our office for the flood flood. Any questions for the code enforcement officer? Okay, fire chief. Fire department ran 26 alarms. Uh, there's no significant damage by any fires. But the uh, rescue teams have been busy. Uh, Labor Day weekend, two days in a row, city rescue ran calls with major injuries where they had to cut the vehicles apart to get the uh, patients out. One of them is kind of rough. In fact, my day for everyone to critique about that one. We had four people who traveled in one vehicle. It took about 28 minutes to cut them out. Fortunately, everybody survived, even though there's some serious injuries. Uh, we spent a few days earlier this week getting ready for the rains and possible flooding. All three stations got their pumps out, made sure it was running, got tarps off and salvage for roof leaks. Both boats were ran to make sure everything was okay. And uh, we're going to continue to do this with a possible storm coming up next week. So. Uh, we're doing everything we can to prepare for the storm. We'll be ready for it. Any question? I, I just want to thank you, Chief. We uh, we didn't realize that uh, Lake Racetown was going to open up their dams last night. So they're opening them again today too. Yeah. I talked to Tim. Talked to the Chief. We were going to be a little proactive and just have the Chief tie up the boat ramp so we didn't lose it this time. But they had a bunch of guys down there. Tim, how many did you end up bringing in? I brought two guys in, and the uh, chief had probably 25 guys with his own guys there, and we got the boat launch out in 25 minutes. Yep, the boat launch was saved, and it's now put away for the winter. We, we figure with the uh, with coming, we're, the water's not going to get to the level where we're going to need that boat launch again. So thank you, Chief. Appreciate well, your help you. last night. Any questions for fire chief? Please, Chief. There were statistics for last month, August, we had 292 calls for service, uh, 42 traffic citations, 37 non-traffic citations, uh, total for those was $6,683, uh, 186 parking tickets, and the total revenue for that was $2,400. Uh, update on the server, um, the hardware has been installed at the station. Um, for Currently in the transition phase from the old server to the new one, is transitioning all the data from the old server um, that's taking place right now. Seems to be going well so far, and probably within the next <coughs> week or so, we'll have it completely transitioned over to the new server. So that seems to be, be going well. Uh, just an update on, we had a couple of major incidents in the last month. Uh, we had a shooting on West 4th Street. Um, some excellent work by our officers as well as in cooperation with PSP and um, the other local departments. Uh, so far we made three arrests in that incident and possibly more to follow. Um, as a result of that we did some saturation details with PSP um, which led, helped lead to one of the arrests we made. So we appreciate all our cooperation and help with that. And we will be conducting more of these operations in the future, um, with PSP and the other local departments, uh, to try to uh, increase our presence in the borough, uh, police presence, and you know deal with some of the issues we're dealing with. Uh, another major incident we had just this past week was one of our officers um, was a victim of a, an attempted shooting. Um, he was not struck, fortunately. He was not injured. Um, and the suspect was arrested shortly thereafter. And Bickham County Regional was handling that incident. 
and um, it made the arrest uh, fairly quickly. So uh, again, a lot of cooperation between departments, and um, that was not related in any way to the other shooting. That's all I have for now. <coughs> any questions for the police chief? Yes. Um, I was sort of curious to see, because I've been sort of watching the paper, but when there is an incident that happens in our town, um, is there, I mean, normally there's an incident report made, correct? And then it goes, how does it ever end up to the media? There's a public information release that's done for every incident. Okay. That's part of their reporting requirements, that they fill out a public information release. Of course, some information cannot be released to the public, depending right. on what the incident is and you know what what all it involves and what what the victim is. You know. So, if it's something that is under investigation, is it where it here's the here is the incident I'm talking about? Driving down, it's Market, right where Blanton is. Mm -hmm. Driving down Market, the one way part, just that small portion before you get on your way going over Vernon. Driving down the street, I see a toddler in a under in a, in a diaper with buck boots on. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going okay. There's a little kid playing on the sidewalk. That's you know. Except I looked again, and then I looked again, and there was no people, like no big people. I pulled over. I tried to speak with the toddler. He was nonverbal. He couldn't tell me his name. He couldn't tell me where he lived. He couldn't tell me where his mom and dad lived. Who his mom was. There were no doors open anywhere. I haven't seen anything about this incident, and that's why I'm concerned. Because truthfully, um, that little boy was dead right now. Had I not got out of the vehicle, and then another lady stopped to help me with the child, because he was on a mission. And if you've ever seen a little kid that doesn't want picked up, this was him. He was like chugging down the road. But if we would not have guided him, to stay onto the side, like I was afraid to pick him up, he'd start screaming, bloody murder, and people would think I was kidnapping him, right? Um, but long story short, if she and I would not have been there, this kid would have been dead, squashed on that road, absolutely no doubt in my mind, at 10 to 10 in the morning. The people nonchalant, I was, like we waited for the police, this kid made it blocks away from his house, and we followed and tried to slow him down, or he could have been who knows where. And I want to make sure that A is being investigated. I want to make sure that, you know, it's been handled or being handled. No, well, I can way. assure you the officers responded, it was investigated. And they would work with children and youth services to determine what, you know, action needed to be taken. So. Right. Because the general, th this is no joke. So the police get there, and I offered to let. Have the, I said, I have a lollipop in my purse because we put the little kid in the car and there's like all kinds of neat stuff for him to play with. And they said, do you want me to get a lollipop for him? Maybe that'll keep him busy. Not that everything won't be steady. And I walked the whole way back past the house that the kid came from, but I didn't know he came from. And the gentleman walks out of the door. Nonchalantly, he looks around. Then he walks down the stairs and they said, do you have any idea who has a toddler, a little boy? I said, he's in a diaper. My, Oh, that's my girlfriend's baby. He gets out all the time. Now, I'm used to dealing with stray dogs, don't get me wrong. But a stray child that gets out all the time? So, I just wasn't sure. Like, I didn't see anything in the paper. And I was just concerned that, you know, I, I wanted to make sure somebody all the time. I'm sure it was investigated. I can't speak directly to that. Right. Person. I don't know specifics of it. But I appreciate it, because sure I just it was wasn't certain how it went like what the process was for it to actually make it to the paper. Well, like I said, they're required to do a, a public information release. It depends on the incident and what occurred. So you know, you're not going to see every incident in the paper, right. but you know, most of the stuff that we can release to the public, we do. I appreciate so. it. Any other questions for the police chief? Okay, Mark. We've advertised for adoption an ordinance that expands the um, inspection and other requirements with regards to boarding houses, rooming houses, hotels, motels, etc. Um, they've always had to be inspected, but the new ordinance um, has, has kind of beefed up the requirements for these types of establishments, including designation of a local manager, 
maintaining a register, um, et cetera. And we've also added in there some uh, requirements that bed and breakfasts and um, Airbnbs have permits, inspections, and uh, like rooming houses have to comply with the county hotel tax and the Pennsylvania state sales tax. Um, I know this arose because of some uh, incidents that the chief brought to uh, council and law and ordinance. I don't know if you want to address any of those, chief. You know, a lot of the problem was, especially in regards to rooming houses, boarding houses, is we had no access to the house to determine who was in what room in the house. And that caused some problems for us. As far as uh, in certain legal circumstances, you know, serving search warrants and, and so forth, we need to know the exact residence of the person, which would be their exact room in that within that residence. So. Um, it was creating a problem like that for us as far as law enforcement is concerned. Um, just as a side note to that, um, just in the discussions here and because of you know, the information that has gotten out to the public, one of the landlords that we were dealing with, or we had issues at the one boarding house voluntarily um, started opening things up and, and cooperating more with us, which was very helpful, and especially in these recent incidents we had, and one of the, the shooting we had on West 4th Street. So um, it's already showing some results, even just from the landlord voluntarily complying and you know, knowing that this ordinance may be coming, uh, sort of helping us out that way. So um, it's already proven to be somewhat helpful. Make a motion that the ordinance be adopted. May, may probably second to adopt the new ordinance, rooming house ordinance. Roll call. Any questions? Roll call. Ian Shea? Yes. Mark Sievers? Yes. Dave Campbell? Yes. Frank Barrier? Yes. Bill Wilson? Yes. Barry Sear? Yes. Anything else, Mark? Yeah, that's all. For our manager. Okay, um, first thing on my list is finance committee. This is, we've gone five years without an appraisal. It's, we, the appraisal is used for our land, building, and equipment, mostly in the insurance quoting end of the borough. So we needed to update our appraisal. Finance committee recommended I get a uh, Appraisal, which we went with the uh, industrial appraisers. We contacted them. They're the ones that did our appraisal before. They have all our information. They have all the data. They came back with a price of $7,760 for the appraisal. So I'm looking for approval to move forward with the appraisal of our land, buildings, and equipment. Yeah. I'll make a motion. Second it. Motion may probably second. Question? All those in favor, give your consent to say aye. Opposed? So care. Okay, the next thing I have on my list is um, the pricing for our gas consumption. And we've been looking at this in finance for the last couple of months. And we just got our the latest update today at it was like 4 o'clock, uh, maybe 3.30. And we are currently at 3.27 ADTH. Um, and the proposal is for 3.22 per DTH for the next two years. So it will lock us in through the end of October 2020. So we, we, Mark and I looked at this. We did get another... Um, opinion on this from a company called Dominion Energy Solutions and they're out um, through March of 20 at 0 .468, 0 .468 for CCF and for two years they're out 0 .485 for CCF. This 
current rate of um, 322 is 0.334, so it's a considerable difference in pricing. So it's, um, it's a recommendation to get this approved so we can lock these gas prices in for the next two years. I'll make a motion. Sucks. Motion made, probably second. Question? All those in favor, give your consent to say an aye. Aye. Opposed? No care. Okay, while we're talking energy, <clears throat> I wish I had a crystal ball. I don't have a crystal ball. If we had a crystal ball, we, we could all be making a lot of money or geniuses, whichever way you want to look at it. But we locked in our energy, our electric prices through the end of October. Let's see, it's 21 through the end of October 2021, which was a 16% savings on what we were paying before, which was a substantial amount of money, savings. Um, thrown out price, we've been looking at this, which is 10.3% below the 16% savings price, which would take us out to, well, it would be 36 months on top of our commitment so it would take us out to like November of 23 10.3% savings which would be a savings of approximately $41,000 so Mark and I had been shooting some emails back and forth and you know the one thing about a municipality is the only way we can generate revenue is to raise taxes so anything that we can do which prevents raising taxes is a good thing so like I said, the current rate we have is a 16% savings on top of the old rate. The new rate is another 10% savings on top of that. The few companies that responded and I gave these rates to, they said, you know, we can't touch that. That's a really good price. So there's gotta be something wrong with the price. And that, that is the GRT, that's the gross receipts tax on top of that. So our current rate is 0.0578 with the GR, including the GRT, the new rate is 0 0.05186. So I'm looking for some directions, some guidance. If you're happy with that rate, I would recommend approving it. Uh, that is, I did compare, that is apples to apples. Is that IGI or is that ADP? This is IGS. Okay. okay. The new rate is? The new rate would be 0 0.05. But that's IGS. Yes. That's fixed. That is fixed. Right. Yep. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Motion been made, properly second. I have a question. Yep, Frank. Your current rate is set through October of 2021? 2020. 20, 20, okay, 2020? Yep. Is there any penalty for breaking that contract? No, we're not breaking it. We're adding on to it. No, there was that same, is it with the same company? Nope. That Definitely. contract will end October 31st, 2020. Right. This new contract starts November 1st, 2020. Oh, okay. Different company at a much better rate. November 1st, 2020. Right. That's why so in other words, you're making a commitment now for two years out. It's actually 37 months. So we're gonna we're gonna actually stay, start from November first, twenty twenty, go let out another thirty seven months. So that's two years from now. Three, 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 three and a month. No, this is twenty eighteen. No, oh, so years right now. Yeah. So two the, years from now, we would start getting a lower rate, ten percent lower than what we have for another thirty seven months. Right. So thirty seven months from November first, twenty twenty. Right. Out thirty seven months. So it's basically through the end of November 2023. Right. It seems like a long way out there. I hope I live to see it. But besides the fact, it's locking in some really good savings for the borough as far as their energy usage, which is the third, well, depending on healthcare, whatever happens there, it's either the second or third largest expense. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor, give your consent to say aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you.
Okay. Um, and on here, just to review the financials, this would be a high overview, just to let you know through where you are through the end of August. The general borough um, is up 4.96% in revenue. They're down 14.18% in expenses. And so the bottom line revenue over expenses, you're at 768.019 this year versus 419.697 last year an increase of 45 percent. Uh, refuse, $813,356 in revenue, $759,694 revenue last year increase of 6.6 percent. Um, the expenses are up 8.5 percent. We're at 641,308 versus 586,544. Uh, some of that was due to the retirement of one of uh, our, our uh, long-term employees and we had some payouts that we had to make. Um, but the bottom line is we're exactly where we were last year and it was a good year. We're at 172 versus 173. So we're down 0.6% in uh, refuse revenue. Wastewater collection revenues uh, 1,146 versus 1,102,000 which is a 3.8% increase in revenue. Expenses is, is 860, 860,000 versus 781, or a 9.2% increase. Um, the total revenue over expense is down 12%, we're at 285. Call from John Baumgartner. 12, 285.9 versus 321.5. Um, you know, some of that, we did some, we had a retirement which we had to pay out. We moved a, somebody down there for a couple of months for training. Um, and then the other thing, the component of collection is we pay for our wastewater treatment out of collection. So it always runs, depending on what happens with wastewater treatment, it always runs about, it runs a year behind. So that has the additional payment for wastewater treatment, that's why the expenses are down. And so wastewater treatment, with that being said, the revenue is up 8.1% because there was an increase from Derry and Granville and Lewis down into the wastewater treatment plant. Expenses are down 5.4%. Total revenue is at 128 this year, 128,000 versus down 10,000 last year. And so totally for those main areas you're looking at uh, Five million four hundred twenty-three thousand dollars versus five million one hundred nineteen. So that's a five and a half percent increase. Expenses are at four million sixty-eight thousand versus four million two fourteen, down three point six percent expenses. Totally, we're at a million three fifty-four eight versus nine hundred four nine, or a thirty-three percent increase. Any questions on where we are? Equation for the I got a couple more things. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, uh, I know. I, it's a, it's, I got a letter from Jenny Barron down at the chamber. Um, I told her I'd bring this up to your attention tonight. You can decide what you want to do, if anything. Uh, it's concerning Dave, Dave Knox. Um, she's, so she's thinking about Dave and his impact on our community. He was so passionate about trying to develop the river into an attraction. Oh yes, the locust. He told me stories about trying to get the U.S. Corps of Engineers to raise the level of the river for more boating options. He was a player for sure, so I was wondering if we could include his name in a small way on the river walk like on benches or special area, like an overlook over the water or, some, or something. Of course, some of this is motivated by his commitment to the Visitors Bureau. He resigned last year, and I would venture to guess that he joined at our beginning 15 years ago. To honor his steadfast belief in this community would mean a lot to me, our board members, and many others. What do you think? I'd be happy to bring us up for funding via our board of directors, but knew I need the borough's blessing first. So I bring this letter to your attention to see what your thoughts are. So I take it they're offering to buy a manager on his honor. Correct. If we okay it for him to do that. 
something the rec board would want to look into a more comprehensive plan to, 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 to put benches and dedicate benches that type of thing on that river walk rather than you know just a scattershot approach i mean i don't, I don't know now there it's it's all in the plan the benches are the plan? yeah we're, the benches are being uh taken care of out of our grant money mm -hmm. okay and then we're gonna we got approval from the marshallis fund to do the garbage cans we're gonna okay. Tim doesn't know that yet, but he's going to be putting in the garbage can. And we're doing some of the landscape, and we're going to put the signs in. So, I mean, we could... So we could dedicate the benches. You could dedicate the benches, but they're fairly salty. You might want to just... You, what do you mean? You're talking about just putting the plaque on it, right, Frank? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, you already have the benches. Well, they're going to have to be a different kind of bench. I mean, they, they, they just changed the style of them. So it... So yeah, it put a plaque on the benches. Well, they, it, they're do more benches, so you don't want to just... They actually make a bench that has... Did you see the ones up at the fountain? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're actually... It's, the, the whole thing is made where you put the plaque right in it. Right. So you can't do it after the fact. I mean, I guess you could, but I'm just talking about... For something that's going to hold up. Right. Okay. I'll see what Jenny wants to do. Okay. So um, I got the fu the final report from Wilt Vendy. So they made sixty nine hundred and fifty two dollars. That they were sailing along until the last week of July, and then Venus was going down there. Then it started to rain. And it didn't stop raining, and the weather got cold, and then it rained some more. But so they were at the on July the 20th, they were 56.48, and they ended up at 69.52. Um, originally, we had talked about giving them, uh, taking them down to 5%. Mr. Wild, after we had a discussion shortly after a meeting that we had in finance, he thought that uh, he was fine with the 10%, so they're going to be sending us a check for $695. So we'll be getting that to help offset the. So that was good. And I, last thing, as Vina said, the bridge is open. Um, so that's a good thing. If you haven't had a chance to go down to the Chestnut Street South High Road <coughs> section, you need to do that because yeah. that's a beautiful thing. They want to continue that same would tie effect right out Chestnut Street. And I imagine after they get done with that, we're going to work on them to do Water Street, where it's the concrete stuff, because you've gotten that same ridge effect from all the ties in Water Street. Is there, I think we discussed this before, so forgive me if I forget, is there a date for Chestnut Street? They're going to knock off session. probably another three years. They're going to do a third, a third, a third. It's roughly 800 feet. So when it's it's gonna play, it's gonna it's you know it's, hopefully it's gonna hold up much better than hold up in the past. And the walking trail, a little concerned because last night with that 26.3 feet peak in the water was gonna be about a foot over the walking trail. So I would you know I was concerned how long it was gonna take to dry out, but now at 21.7. You know, we've got a little bit of a cushion. Do they account for the letting out of Bracetown or not when they make that prediction? They did last night. Did they? Okay. Yeah, they did. Um, but I, you know, uh, did you know that was going to happen? The race, they were going to let that much water out of Bracetown, Bob? Not for the after fact. Yeah. Yeah, when they do that, I mean, you saw how quickly right. that river went up, right, Tim? Yeah. So, but anyhow, yeah, the walking trail. We're looking at the middle of October to have it completed, and then we'll have a dedicator, dedication ceremony shortly thereafter. You're done. <laughs> Any questions for Birdman? Yeah, what, what, um, what's the feet that affects the walking trail with the river? How many feet is it? The, the walking trail is at 35 feet. 
Stage, isn't 31 yeah. our flood stage? Yeah, I, I mean, that's, and I, the only reason I know that is because I was looking at that concrete tower that they have down there with mm -hmm. the feet on it, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at 36, which is, it's about that higher above the trail, and I'm thinking this is not good. Well, we got next week, or at the end of this week to go through, yeah. Well, I know, I, I mean, we're not out of the woods by any no, stretch of the imagination, because there's another storm behind Florence, yes. so we'll see where that oh, goes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. There's two the one's going to go north. Oh, okay. okay. Thanks. Any other questions for our manager? No. I told you I don't have a crystal ball. Okay, on finishing their business, approval budget revisions to the Borough of Lewistown's 2015-2016 CDBG for ADA ramps with truncated domes and South Wayne Street reconstruction and Spring Street reconstruction for county's resolution. So, Jim, do you want to explain this? You want me to? I'll, I'll uh, explain it if you don't mind. Uh, Have at it, Mr. Uh, well, uh, this is a revision to the uh, award for the South uh, Wayne and Spring Street projects. Um, the county is the grantee, so the commissioners approved the resolution. We wanted to get uh, the borough council approval. There's no uh, necessity to have a separate additional resolution. Um, basically, what it is is that uh, the South Wayne Street reconstruction project was funded in 2015-16, uh, and the Spring Street project was funded in 2017. In the amounts of thirty-six thousand seven twenty-four, forty-eight thousand six hundred thirty dollars, and eighty-five thousand one hundred and seventy dollars, respectively, projects were awarded this evening. Uh, the bid was awarded to J. Falk Ward Road and Sons in the amount of one hundred sixty-three thousand um, three sixty-one sixty-four. This came in over budget of $6,571.54, so we need to move some funding around. And the four uh, actions we're asking you to approve and allow us to submit this paperwork to DCD would be uh, to decrease the ADA ramps project in 2015 in the amount of $19,188.93, increase the South Wayne Street project in the amount of $19,188.93, Decrease the 2016 South Wayne Street project in the amount of $23,809.55 and add the 2016 Spring Street project in the amount of $23,809.55. Um, another reason why, and I'll defer to the borough manager, is uh, we don't need all that money for the ADA RAM projects. He came up with an alternative methodology which is going to save money on the project. So there's we want to get rid of the 15 funds first, so they're the reasons for the budget revision. Council Joyce, you want to approve this? A motion to approve. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Second. Motion we make properly second. Question. All those in favor give your consent to say aye. Aye. Opposed? Approval to reappoint Lisa Knudsen to Civil Service Commission. So moved. I'll second it. Motion made properly second. Question. Roll call please. Ian Shade. Yes. Mark Seavers. Yes. Dave Campbell. Yes. Barrier? Yes. Bill Wilson? Yes. Larry Sears? Yes. Okay. Approval to release 2015-2016 CBBG funds for advertising for South Wayne Street. Invitation for bids. This amount is uh, $796.08 uh, for this is where they have the county advertise uh, this for the uh, proposal uh, for the bids. Council's wishes. Make a motion to approve the 
release of the funding. I'll second. Motion well, made, probably second. Question? All those in favor, give your consent to say aye. Aye. No, no, no. no care. Approval to release 2015-2016 CDBG funds for engineering services for Monument Square Streetscape project. There's actually two invoices here from the EADS group in regards to phase five of the Monument Square Streetscape project. Um, one of them is $7,157.73 and the other one is $4,052.25. Council's wishes. I'll make a motion to approve the release of funding for discussion. Third second. Motion made properly second. Questions? Okay, what what particular part of the streetscape project is this? Uh, this is the phase five, which is South Main Street from the alley at the embassy down to <coughs> the Water Street intersection and Water Street over towards the managed senior apartments. And we're going to tie into their improvements. That'd be both sides of the street on water or just the one? Both sides. Okay. And I don't know if it's a full sidewalk on the lower side, but I'm, I'm fairly certain it is. <coughs> Any questions. other questions? All those in favor, give your consent to saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No care. Frank, you're up on law and ordinance. Okay. Uh, two items here. We'll go to item two first. Approval to advertise a sign ordinance. I just received that today. I was out of town last week and I would. Uh, prefer that with the, the committee review it, uh, discuss it at our next meeting, and if anybody else on council, you should have it. It was released to everybody. If there's any questions, let us know. So for that, I'd like to just push off for a month. Okay. Uh, the other had to do with Mr. Conley's request to remove part of the sidewalk. The of the road. Excuse me? The second month of the road has been pushed off. I still didn't hear you. I said this is the second month in a row this has been pushed off. Do you want to make a motion to approve it? Yeah, I looked at it and I make a motion to approve it. Okay. Motion has been made to approve it. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion has been made second. Roll call, please. Ian Shade? Yes. Mark Sievers? Yes. Dave Campbell? Yes. Frank Barrier? No. Bill Wilson? No. Larry Seaton? No. Miracle so, meeting. So do you have to have a special meeting, Mark, or do you have to come back? Can it be postponed? Mm -hmm. right now. All right. You have to have a special meeting. Frank, while he's looking that up, you want to go ahead with number one there? Sure. Uh, we had a request by uh, Mr. Conley on you know, Lombardi Circle to uh, remove part of his sidewalk. Uh, he lives at the end of a street. Uh, his sidewalk is at the end of the, it'd be the last house with a sidewalk. And he wanted to remove part of his sidewalk, which which fronts the street, and put grass there. Uh, that that prompted the law and ordinance 
to look at our ordinances in regard to sidewalks. And having Mr. Remy look into it, it appears as though the borough has no requirement that you have a sidewalk in front of your property. That said, any resident in the borough who would desire to remove their sidewalk and plant grass there could probably do it. Uh, that, that, that's what it appears to be. Am I correct on that, Mark? Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it's kind of strange. I was surprised when I read the sidewalk ordinance that it doesn't have a provision saying everybody fronts on a borough street shall install and maintain a sidewalk. There's some language in section 212-25 that is, I think everyone on the Law and Ordinance Committee agree, somewhat murky. Uh, what it says is upon written notice and order by the department, the owner of a property which abuts the borough street or which abuts the state highway in the borough where sidewalks or curbs are required or permitted by the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation shall construct such sidewalks and curbs within the right of way um, as they're directed by the borough. So I, I think there was an intent by the borough to um, require that if you abut a borough street or if you abut a PennDOT road and you're given notice, you have to construct a sidewalk or you have to maintain it. So. I, I think though that you know I looked at some other places like Carlisle Borough that have a clearer clearer language as to what is actually required and you know my thoughts or recommendations would be to send it back to Law and Ordinance Committee to determine what kind of improvements we can make to the sidewalk ordinance to make sure it's clear to everybody what is and is not required in the borough. But I think the thought was that this is an issue that um, the committee didn't really want to tackle unless uh, there was a, a general feeling on Borough Council that it's something that Borough Council wanted to address and felt was important to change or address at this time. Well, law and ordinance set it aside rather than uh, writing a new ordinance just to see what Council's attitude was on it. We really felt that the whole board should decide whether or not law and ordinance should, in fact, write an ordinance that says you should have a sidewalk before we just went ahead and did it presented. <coughs> so I'd like to know what the board thinks we should do. My opinion would be wherever there is a sidewalk, it should be maintained. I mean, some maybe one idea would be say, you know, as of X date, you know, everywhere that there is a sidewalk should be maintained and kept in good repair. That's one possibility that, that could be looked at. So if you don't have a sidewalk, then you won't get paid, right? That's the other point. Too. Right. That, that's going to be my question. What's that? Yeah, yeah, because I think it's Rosemont. Yes, exactly. They did stormwater improvements several years back with the intention of eventually paving that because this is like down below Mount Rock Cemetery. But none of the improvements have been made, none of the curbs have been put in or the sidewalks put in. So to this date, that street still is pretty much a gravel street. And that's all constantly. Yeah. Where there's not a sidewalk, you always put a six inch curb with the mowing. Paving machine, so they're not paving at all. We can pave and just put a six inch curb to back it up so the channels of water going into the inlet. No, I think, I mean, I'm speaking for me, not as a borough manager, but I think that there has to be some incentive there. I mean, if they want the borough to spend the money that it costs to pave the street, there, there needs to be a mutual sharing of the responsibilities then. Just me personally say that. Yes. 
is there not um, something within the borough limits that states if their sidewalk is cracked or anything that they're responsible to fix their sidewalk? Correct. Yes, there is. So what you're in actuality saying is those people just tear up the sidewalk right now and plant grass and well, that's, cost five hundred dollars to fix that's it. Right. What <coughs> that's that's exactly what Mr. Conley is asking to do. Mm -hmm. And really, we have no say in the matter. We have no way to stop it. Well, he would have to get a permit. He'd have to get a permit. But it's, it's but not right. prohibited by our ordinances, yeah. what he's asking to do. I think it's it's less than clear that there is a need to maintain that sign. And I think it should be clear what everybody in the borough's responsibilities are towards having or not having sign. It goes beyond, you know, what right. property. But it doesn't answer Mr. Conway's request, or, you know. Really no, but it, you know, this is way right now. He's not required to have a sidewalk. He, he, well, he anybody has a side? No, that's just that. Well, I'm just sending this back to law and order. <laughs> 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 I would be too. <laughs> you guys, you guys, come up. Yes. Uh, I mean, the only place that I know that sidewalks are required are in your subdivision land development ordinance. Right. If you're going to, right, if you're going to create a new subdivision. There is a requirement that the new subdivision would have sidewalks. If required by council. Right. And, and that's where I believe in the late 60s when this, or whenever this development was created, it was probably a requirement. So for him to remove them, I don't know if that would, again, I guess it's got to go back for further discussion, but it is a requirement of your subdivision ordinance. Yeah, just like alleys for every lot and things like that. So. Just, just to piggyback on what Luke is saying, if you know, know the history of Pine Park Drive, Pine, it was a, it was a, like a sub, it was a development, but they didn't follow what the requirements for for a development, and they didn't put in the curbs, they didn't put in the sidewalks, and then when they came to the borough and asked the borough to take the street over, the borough, Frank, you probably were on council at that point, the borough refused to do it. That was, yeah, that was. Several that was prior to our time on council. That was and, yeah, and, 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 and periodically, somebody would come from that street when that street paved, and it's to no standard at all to even paved. Yeah, mean, so that he's graded, ballast, the whole thing, and uh, that should have been done by the developer. But at that point in time, we had no subdivision and land land development ordinance, and you could just have at it, which is what happened. And I think Rosemont is another example of the same thing. I mean, it goes on to say in your ordinance, sidewalks shall be required for streets where the following are met. And to continue existing sidewalks when joining subdivisions, access to clean facilities, so on and so forth. So um, I'm sure it was a requirement at the time for that, you know, for that part of town. Frank, I'd like to get together with, with Mark and, and get something in order here. If you want to ran through law and ordinance again. Yeah, yes. That's so what you want. Yes. And okay. that, that we can straighten this out so we have, so we have a ruling there on this. I mean, I, I, I think as much a council under the impression that if you have a sidewalk, you should maintain it rather than tearing it up or crashing. Is that the general consensus? Yeah. I mean, I. Right. Okay. So, come up with. So you got the general consensus of council, so come up with something to prove it. Okay, we'll take it to law and ordinance. Okay. Anything else, Frank? I'm oh, sorry, I got off sidetrack there, and I forgot. Oh, okay. I was looking up uh, the council. Uh, Mark. The topic. Yeah. When. I move that we take a five minute recess. A ten minute Second recess, minute. I'm sorry. I think it's a privilege motion. I don't think it needs a second. Is that correct, Mark? I would have to look at Robert's rules there, but I want to look at this. I think it's a privilege about. motion. No, there's no other motion on the table. Well, there's no other motion on the table. It, it's just to clarify what, what happened here. I just have some questions. Can I make a motion for somebody to reconsider their motion?
after the vote's been taken, roll call's been called. Dave, I, I have to look that up in Robert's rule because I don't know the answer off the top of my head. So let me look up this about the the vote on the tie vote, and then we'll we'll, we'll address that. I mean, this is that's what it's regarding, and I'm trying to kind of figure out a way out of having a special meeting and advertising it. And You made a motion to recess? Yes. And I seconded it. Call the vote. Ten minute recess. Motion to recess. a motion to recess. Motion to recess. Motion to recess. recess. Motion to 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 recess. going to, but I, I need to know if I'm able to, but for all those rules, um, after roll call has been called. A, a reconsideration can be moved only by one who voted yes if the motion involved was adopted or no if the motion was lost. Here the motion was lost because we didn't have a majority, yeah. so we have to be someone who voted against it. We have to make a motion to reconsider. So somebody who voted no would make a motion for Mark to reconsider the motion of passing the sign ordinance. We could save the cost of advertising for a special meeting in the time and bring it back to the next council meeting after we've had further discussion. Well, you're basically going to take done. another vote on his motion. I mean, he voted yes, so he can't make the motion. So it would have to be someone who voted yes. Right. Yeah. And we could reconsider the motion. Right. You could. He could read. Right. I mean, his motion. I have a question. Well, it's already been voted on, so you can't resend it. They're about to be reconsidered. I have, a, I have another question. Yes. Uh, how long prior to a meeting do you have to advertise the ordinance? When does the ad have to be in? How many days? Um, at least seven days before the meeting. Okay. So for a, a Monday meeting, it has to be advertised on the Saturday. Then you're going to adopt the ordinance. Right. Okay. Seven full days. If reconsideration is just to vote on the exact same motion again, I, I mean, we would be at the exact same spot we're at now. Is that our only possible action, Mr. Remy? Yeah, I mean, reconsideration is the parliamentary <coughs> means to reconsider something that's already been voted on. Can you make a motion to adopt instead of having a special meeting, bring the vote up at the next regularly scheduled council meeting? No, because it, it just is. Just reconsider the motion. The motion was made to advertise the ordinance.
Well, if someone, yeah. if someone who voted no on the original motion wants to make a motion to reconsider and someone, yeah, the somebody council's changed, changed their mind. Somebody would change their vote. I mean, I don't know what, you know, obviously you don't know what the votes are going to be. I don't think you lose anything by reconsidering it. And you might save yourself a special meeting. And the cost of that is And I'll make a motion to reconsider. Can I second that motion since I yeah, can? Yes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I'll yeah. see. I second Frank's motion right. to reconsider. Well, basically, here a yes vote will push that back to law and ordinance, and then it'll be voted on at the next meeting. Is that correct? To advertise. What was the motion, Diana? The motion was to advertise the ordinance. Okay. So a yes vote to reconsider. Or if someone who voted yes votes no, then it won't be advertised. So what do we vote? If we don't want to advertise it, do we vote yes or no? I made a motion to reconsider. Read the, can you read it back, Diana? Can okay, you okay back so, so, so we need another one to vote no against the ordinance so it goes back to law and order, law yeah, and order for that next way. meeting. That's what it looks okay. like. Yeah. Okay. Okay, motion made properly second to reconsider the motion. Which was to advertise, to the, advertise the, the sign ordinance. The, the sign ordinance for the next meeting. For adoption at the next meeting. Right. Question. Mm -hmm. Roll call vote. Amy Shea. No. Mark Sievers. No. Dave Gamble. No. Mike Barrier. No. 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 Go along with that. Go Yeah, this is the advertising. Yeah, yeah we're, right. we're taking right. another vote on the motion. We're going to take it back to law and ordinance. Yeah. 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 Okay. No. <laughs> Just let me explain it again. I didn't have a chance to review this, and that's why I didn't want to send it out for advertising. Okay, I just got this this morning. And I haven't had a chance to review it, and I just don't think it's good business to just pass something that you haven't read. I agree. I mean, we had a really long discussion over this sign ordinance, and there's a lot of stuff we discussed. But I just want to make sure it's as discussed. And if there's anything that we spot that we don't like, we can take it up with law and ordinance, and we'll bring it up the next meeting. I mean, I know there's somebody has a sign out there that they want to hang it as soon as possible, but I. I Government moves slow. Okay, so we don't need a special meeting. No, sir. It's okay. Do you have anything else under law and ordinance, Frank? Well, you got plenty for it. <laughs> Certainly tickles me. Personnel, Bill Wilson. <clears throat> Section okay. session to discuss these, these uh, employment. Okay, we're going to what? Did you have something nice you want to bring up? Okay. No, but that's just the streets, but you okay. can do that after this. Okay, we're going to turn when to into executive session. Okay, we're going to call the meeting back to session. We're going to get back into Bill Wilson with the report on the personnel committee. Okay, the one that we're looking to approve for street committee is uh, Adam Stout. I'm sorry, street crew is uh, Adam Stout from Lewistown. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion may properly second. Question. All those in favor give their consent for saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, 
garbage thrower <clears throat> looking to improve his bias harvest off from those towns. Your motion. So moved. I'll second. Motion made, second. Question. All those in favor give their consent by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, part time uh, parking enforcer, George Pastore from Belleville. Is there a motion? So, so moved. Second. Motion made properly, second. Question. All those in favor, give their consent to say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carries. Now, going into... We have a part-time police officer. Position. Oh, yeah. Okay. Bill yeah. Callahan. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we extend uh, an offer of employment to Philip Callahan for a part-time uh, police officer position that we contingent upon him passing his background check to my I'll second that motion. Motion may properly second. Our uh, Bill Callahan for part-time police position. <coughs> I think it's Phil. It is Phil. Oh, Phil, no. I'm sorry. Phil Phil. Phil. Just so Diana got that right. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor, give their consent to say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Now, the, we're getting into budget time here. And in order to make things a little more convenient, time-wise and so on, I'm going to take Dave Campbell and Mark Sievers off the Finance Committee, and I'm going to replace them with Frank Barrier and myself. Do you have a reason for that? And I'm also going to take Dave Campbell off the Personnel Committee and replace him with Frank Barrier. Well, I don't know. They're, they're advertised, I'm sure. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're advertised. I don't know. Yeah, Even for the, the, okay. It's a point. When you confront leadership, you, this you is what you happens. You and Chairman Bill? Yeah, so I got voted on council from the budget experience and finance one. background, yep. and he doesn't give yep. a time yep. frame to the public, just so everybody's aware of that. Absolutely. Okay? Never got an email, never got contacted about it. And just totally removes me from the finance. It has to do with the two people that confront situations right. in this community, and it's backlash from the president of this council for doing this. Everybody so. has that meeting to bring before the council. Which is why we need new leadership. Make yep. a motion we adjourn. Wow. You, you weren't recruited for your second the last time, Mr. President. Yep. Motion made when you violated second, council members' rights. Favor, give me a 10 to 10 and I. You can explain the reason for 